Many times I've heard people say, really it's hard to be humble when you're so good. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. That was a statement made by C.S. Lewis from his book, Mere Christianity. Jesus explained that same thing this way. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Matthew 23, verse 12. Humility is a characteristic that we often hear of, particularly from religious circles and in our sermons, but not so much in the world. It seems the world is concerned about me. What's good for me, not what's good for everyone else. The reason for our humility is simply because we are commanded it in New Testament passages. We are commanded to be humble. You know, lowliness in some of our versions is interchangeable with the word humility. In two of these verses in uh, the King James Version have the word humility instead of lowliness. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering, Colossians 3, verse 12. And again in 1 Peter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5, verse 5. It's a very good verse. Well worth memorizing. Humility is not always understood by all people as it should be. The concept of lowliness, which is the same term as humility, uh, does not apply to some people who think that they know it all. Truly, they don't have a full grasp of the meaning of humility. Every Christian knows that it should be and should represent a critical attitude for everyday Christian living and everyday fellowship one with another. It is a very critical attitude that we're speaking about here. Right now we want to talk about what humility is. Later on, what humility is not. And that will be the subject of the remainder of our lesson. Humility is described by Webster as freedom from pride and arrogance, humbleness of mind, a modest estimate of one's own personal worth and value, lowliness of mind. You know, this uh, represents us recognizing and accepting our true place in this society and in the church. In humility, we all should understand one's place before God, the Almighty God. There are those who think that they are greater than God. But we need to realize we are God's creations. And as such, we have no right to question the Creator, no matter what we think. Romans 9, verses 20 through 21. But indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay? From the same lump, he makes things of one vessel for honor and another for dishonor. We are all a creation of God. You know, as the sinful and unrighteous as we are, we should never question our Lord and our Creator. 
Every one of us is full of sin. And as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, verse 10. We should humble ourselves and we should remember that we are objects of God's mercy and grace and His compassion. We are what we are because He has created us. It says in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And people who are not humble will boast about how they did this and how they did that, giving God no credit whatsoever. Thus we should always present ourselves as lowly before the Almighty God, because in fact we are lowly individuals before God. But what about one's place before other men here on this earth? Must we be humble in their eyes? In the eyes of other men, we must remember that we also are sinners, just like they are. There is no difference. They are sinful and we are sinful. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23. They are our fellow humans, just as we are. The same people for whom Christ died. Titus 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. We're all sinners and God was here to save all of us. It boils down to the fact that we are no better than they are. And we are not any more important to God than they are. But we had a choice and we made the correct choice. But we are still on, on a par with other men. We have no basis whatsoever to consider ourselves better than other people are. All advantages that anyone has in this life are mere gifts from the grace of God. Those who are humble are fully aware of the fact that they have no basis for pride before God and before other men. Everything we have is a gift of God. If we're truly humble, we'll seek making comparisons of ourselves with other people around us. We will not be looking for some way in which we might be considered better than they are. We, we need no way, we need to have, not have a way to condemn other people based on who we think that we are. Each of us can have great strengths and great weaknesses depending on what God has given us. We're all equal in God's eyes. He is the potter of us all. We are the clay vessels of His creation. We are what He made us to be. You know, we must see ourselves as servants of God and all mankind as well, seeking to do the benefits of good that we can for other people as best we can. You know, there are many things that sometimes we overlook that we can do and should do. Therefore, if there be, is any consolation in Christ, if there is any comfort in love, if any fellowship in spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded and having the same love and being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition and conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem the others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Philippians 2 verses 1 through 4. This is a very good description of how to remain humble in the eyes of God and in the eyes of your fellow man. Well, what is, humble, what is humility not? Well, humility is not self-degradation by any means. It is not self-abasement. It is not a lack of 
self-esteem. God created us all equal and none of us are any lower than the other. We are all sinners. God desired that we recognize our personal values and put our talents to use in the church for his service and for his glory. Remember the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30? Even if you only have one talent, God expects you to utilize it for his glory. You remember what happened to the man who had one talent and did not use it. He said, cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 25, verses 29 and 30. It tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 28, that we uh, have useful members and all of us as useful members are given the talent by the Lord to use for his glory. Those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. That's how we treat one another here within the church. We give more people honor and we bestow greater honor upon those who are the weakest of our group. We must be able to recognize individual strengths and weaknesses, not for the purpose of our pride, but to be able to use what we have in the service of God. So when we look around and we say, well, this person has this talent and this has, person has that talent, let's allow them to use those talents and bestow upon them the great honor of allowing them to use those talents. You know, we must be able to recognize them, and if no one ever points them out to us, how are we going to utilize them? We can't. Humility is a very critical attribute for a Christian. We must recognize how critical our, humanity, our humility is to our Christian character. We all, we all too often find that some Christians do not... Uh, show that humility so that we can find it. And there are those who just plain lack it. Not everyone has the humility that they should have. You know, it's impossible to please God without humility. Matthew 23, verse 12. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Matthew 23, verse 12. If you do not have humility... You do not have full faith and trust in God and His Word because He told you, commanded you to be humble. Faith and trust in God, would, which means a whole lot less confidence in yourself, putting your faith and trust in Him. You don't have to rely upon yourself. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Jeremiah tells us, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Humbly before God, we need to allow God to direct our steps in all the things that we do. You know, we should never question God's will for us. Because His will is always for our best interest. In whatever situation we find ourselves, if we trust in Him, we will find that His will works out for the best for all of us. Humility is a very necessary attribute of a servant of God and a Christian here on this earth, Luke 17. Verses 7 through 10. Verse 10 reads, And so likewise you, when you have done all the things which you are commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. To be a profitable servant, we're going to have to go beyond what our duty is to do. Servants must be humble and accept their state. God knows when we are humble. 
He knows what the state of our mind is. He knows what our current living conditions are. It is through the grace of God that we have the opportunity to be humble before him and before our fellow man. Sometimes it's difficult to consider ourselves as being owned by someone else. But truly we are. We are slaves, bondservants to our Lord and Savior. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 and Galatians, uh, 5, uh, Galatians 2 verse 20. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Because he bought you, he paid for you, and he owns you. But he gives you the opportunity to do his will. Because he can disown you just as well as he bought you. We are not our own, we are bought, we are paid for, and we are servants of God. Realizing this, knowing we are not our own, should humble us. And it will make us better servants of God here on earth and in eternity if we can humble ourselves before Him as we should. Humility makes love work. Without humility, you really truly don't have love. Love suffers long. It is kind. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, love is not puffed up. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. When you're puffed up, your humility is not showing at all, is it? Only your self-pride and your arrogance. Love is nothing if it does not have humility. Jesus showed us his love. How? By being humbled and becoming a bondservant here on this earth just as we are Philippians 2 verses 5 through 11 but he made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. He humbled himself to the point of death. Would we do that for our fellow man? When I think about this, I think about that song, Mary, Did You Know? Mary, did you know that you kissed the face of God when you kissed your baby? That's how humble he was. He became a man just like we were at one time, a baby. Humility is expected of us. Remember, Jesus humbled himself for you and for me. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. And let each esteem the others better than himself. And let each one of you look not only for your own interests, but for the interest of others. Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. Without humility, our attitudes will go wrong. We cannot love each other as we ought to without humility. This includes our love for God. Our love for other people, our love for Christians, our love for our, na our neighbors, and even our love for our spouses. Humility is driven by love. It's a very critical attribute. You know, the church cannot function according to God's intention if members are not humble towards one another. Without love and without humility, there's strife. There's conceit, contention, disorder, envy, backbiting, and backstabbing. I thank God that this congregation has the humility and the love for each other that prevents us from being as described there on the slide. 
You know, Christians cannot function in this world according to God's intentions if that critical humility is lacking in our humanity. If we serve and if we love and if we esteem others more highly than ourselves, that will provide a different portrayal of our faith to other people. They will know that we are sons of God, children of God. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 says we are to glorify God. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5 verse 16. So let your light so shine before men. Don't do it through arrogance and pride, but through humility and service. Humility and service, not arrogance and pride, are what is needed in our lives. By this we imitate Christ, Romans 15 verses 1 through 4. Then we who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak. And not to please ourselves, let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Spirit scriptures might have hope. Each and every one of us is looking for that eternal hope. Remember that hope comes by hearing the word of God and your faith. Romans 10.10 10 and Mark 16 verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Who does not believe will be condemned. Repenting of our sins. You know, John came baptizing in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Mark 1 verse 4. Professing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and being immersed in the waters of baptism. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned, Mark 16, 16 again, and live faithful until death. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life, Revelation 2, 10, to be part of that verse. Of course, we as erring Christians need to repent and pray to God for our forgiveness. And he says he is just and he will forgive us if we will ask him. The invitation is yours if you need to repent or be baptized while we stand and sing.